Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Ben, the Bane Davis. Very intriguing fight lined up for you against Oscar Willis in bare knuckle. BKFC 67 in Marbella, Spain. How exciting does it feel to you to have that read out? It sounds like something epic. It sounds like the agenda of a man who is living his life, I would say. How's that going? <laughs> I think it absolutely is that last part uh, to a T. You know, everything I do is is with the effort to make the most of shit. And I can't really think of a better way to spend my time leading up to October 12th and certainly on that date than uh, this dumb idea <laughs> that we've committed to. Can you tell us how it came about? He called me, yeah. So he hit me up about two months ago and articulated that it just made sense you know for him mac life obviously with connor being an investor and part owner of bkfc there's some justification for uh them pushing bkfc on their platforms and in oscar's very twisted and demented mind he was like well i should fight because that would maybe uh help justify that increased exposure and when they were examining options for opponents there really is only one guy that made sense and that's yours truly You've been gunning for bigger and bigger challenges. You know, I, I love following your social media. You're always engaging and you're always up to something fun, which is yeah. cool. You know, a man after my own heart in that regard. So can you talk to me about your martial arts journey? Because began with Gabe Silver. It actually began several months prior to that. So I'd say it really started in May of last year with a Fury Pro grappling match on CFFC's platform okay. against their president, Brad Bolton, uh, who snapped my ankle in about 13 seconds. Now, that was not the start that I wanted. So I worked for a couple months to get into the Misfits universe and got a phone call. Hey, we need you to fight this person on this date at this weight, this location. Cool. You know, I'm all in. And it was obviously Anderson Silva's son. So that obviously didn't go according to plan either. Finally got the big bounce back a couple months ago. And, um, you know, I'm not like this is not something I'm going to be doing long term. It's been a year and a half, I would say, of me having these opportunities. But like it's very quickly coming to a close. This is tiring. <laughs> Uh, and you enjoy like a beer and a burger and stuff like that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, I am a, a pretty well-documented drinker. Um, <laughs> obviously, again, going to ASU, it's a party party school, and I do have that in my DNA. But, I mean, I, I, I do live like a pretty healthy lifestyle. I think with the traveling, I constantly have to do i try to balance it because it'd be very easy for me to dip into just like nothing but fast food and, and killing my body uh but you know i've been trying to take care of it as best i can so what's your relationship like with oscar i've met him uh uh connor khabib years ago seemed like a solid dude always got a good story to tell you're always on the circuit covering combat sports you guys friends yeah, no, him and I have a really good relationship. Uh, it's it's actually kind of funny. I remember meeting him, I think, two or three years ago, and nothing but positive things to say. I've never had a bad interaction, and uh, you know, we're not we're not exactly like the closest of friends. I haven't spent too much time with him, uh, but you know, I, I like the guy a lot. I think he does good work, and um, you know, I think that that that's the type of person I would want for something as risky as BKFC is someone that I have a good familiarity with and am on good terms with. I mean, the last thing I need is to have disdain for my opponent and, and have beef and, and hate because there's just too much that can go wrong within this. And I know that there's a lot of people online that are like, oh, well, we want, you know, people that hate each other. Uh, they're f stupid. They're actually dumb because, <laughs> you know, if I break my hand on his school, at least I like the guy. Can you talk to me about bare knuckle then? It's how long, yeah. I mean, when we were kids, right, I imagine like bare knuckle was not something I was thinking about. And now it's in all of our eye lines. Bare knuckle is everywhere, especially you talk about Connor getting involved. So what does bare knuckle mean to you and how much is it on your radar before this? I was a pretty big fan of BKFC, you know, when Artem Loba was doing his thing in the earlier chapters of the promotion's history, I was pretty interested. The whole Jason Knight saga, the Pali Malinaji fights, I just thought it was fun. And the thing that really 
checked my box was the presentation. It was it was a very well run show, and I think it was professional to a T and of a high quality and standard, which sets it apart tremendously. Like when you and I think bare knuckle, usually it's those Russian organizations where they've got the hay bales around a concrete floor and someone's going to the hospital and potentially dying. <laughs> now BKFC has had its own fair share of crazy instances, but it seems like they do everything they can to package this really formidable discipline and combat sports style in in the best way possible so um i was a big fan of it i you know have been to a couple byb shows they've they've shown me a lot of love they were actually kind of annoyed that i took the bkfc fight uh one of their i think i think don don pelvia he uh reached out and he was like what the f man and i was like you had time. <laughs> if you guys wanted me for anything, you guys had plenty of time uh, to get the band involved. But BKFC struck first. So, can you talk to me about how you see the fight panning out? I assume he's had an amateur MMA fight, right? Have you yeah. watched that? What kind of style do you see from him? Like, if I recall, you like to you like to come in flurries, so to speak. Is that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I think this is going to be very. It, it, it's hard to tell because my best and most recent showing is me throwing a bunch of body kicks and leg kicks, which obviously I can't do. His best and most recent showing was years ago, so you really can't extrapolate or put too much faith into it. Uh, but within that fight, he was grappling quite heavily. It was a lot of clinching. It was a lot of takedowns and control time. And... You know, his stance was a bit more of like a, a Muay Thai type stance. It was very, you know, squared up, which in boxing is a complete no-no. So, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, all right, you know, he's been on record saying that he had 20 weeks to prepare for that. You know, it was the Train Alta program up in Vegas. Now he's only got a handful of weeks and he has to learn a completely new discipline where the, the stance is different. Everything's different. And unwiring how your brain works to then rewire it for a boxing format i think is challenging and i would know because i f did it last year in september against gabe and it did not work out well right so that was a really i had about three weeks to prep for that fight and the whole time we was spent just trying to learn the basics trying to get an understanding of the science behind boxing wasn't able to so <laughs> you know i can't I, you know i can't apply my past it onto him because he's incredibly different and uh, of course has a great team up at extreme couture i think he's doing two a days up there and um you know those guys will absolutely get him ready to the best of their abilities but i just know how tricky it is to try and you know pivot over into boxing and like thankfully i had that camp last year and uh, you know i've had i've had this one too where i can sharpen and you know remember things uh refine things so i don't know like i genuinely think i'm gonna be the better boxer and no disrespect i'm sure he feels the same way but I, I should win this. You know, I've been more active. Uh, I think I'm in a, a bit better shape than he is. He's stronger. I mean, the guy's been doing his strength and conditioning, but muscles don't win fights. So <laughs> you're on a mission to get abs, right? I know that like you've you've had some shit online <laughs> about your weight. Like, how's that going? You get you're like you you better you know you better watch this uh, watch this space. Yeah. So how's that going? Are you getting like schvelt and the abs coming through? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm trying to get as, as lean and mean as possible. I'm trying to trim it up. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd say I'm like near abs. Listen, abs are, are also a genetic thing. You know, you have to have good genetics for muscle development, right? And I've never had that. I was never an athlete growing up. So people got to cut me some slack. I will say that. Um, but we're getting there. I think I think with each camp, we get closer and closer to, uh, you know, one day getting the abs. But, uh, you know, the reality is like, it's hard. I'm sure. I'm sure you know with tr these travel schedules, like staying in shape and, and working on your body continuously, with the added element of always jetting around the world, that's incredibly taxing and challenging. You know, and there's a lot of other things that I'm trying to balance as well. So you know, we'll see. When I get abs, I will make sure that everyone f knows. Yeah, like uh, it's like you don't leave a Ferrari in the garage, right? So, you Completely. Know. Yeah. So, Every you know. pick will be shirtless. The black turtleneck gone. I'm gonna be naked at events, dude. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, the style. I have to say, man, you've been killing it uh, recently. So I spent a lot of time covering four ounce gloves Muay Thai, and mm -hmm. you know we're always speaking about how one touch, you can you're out of there. So there's yeah. no ounce. <laughs> no, it's nothing. zero ounce gloves. There's no protection. <laughs> so you know somebody getting knocked out here and. And, and how do you feel about that? I've been knocked out once before, right? So I've had I've had the worst that could possibly happen, which was a devastating, very, on his end, dominant against me uh, first round TKO loss. And I got back up, life moved on, 
you know, and there were opportunities that came more so after that event than were around before. So I don't know. I think I have a greater perspective on, you know, losses than many people. And it's not going to phase me. It's certainly not going to stop me. I think it, it, it would extend the time that I take off you know, for sure. And it would be frustrating and disappointing. But those are reactive emotions in the moment. And I think that with time and, and time being only probably a week removed from the event, if I lose, I'll be fine. Life moves on. I, I, I think people think about my losses more than I do. Um, I really don't give a f <laughs> I, I got to keep focusing on what's ahead. You know what I mean? And uh, that's the only way that I can function. So if it doesn't go my way, doesn't go my way i had a great chapter and it was a very it, it, it's been a fun process it'll be a fun process and uh you know that's that but the good news is it's not gonna happen does it scare you does this scare you you're fighting bare knuckle yeah of course of course it scares me it's a very scary thing it's terrifying you know i i have no illusion that this is gonna go well <laughs> even if i win i'm sure i'm gonna lose in some way shape or form right there is gonna be a piece of me that gets left in that bullfighting ring in marbella so you know i I'm, I'm pretty cognizant of the risks associated uh both you know to my face uh which could get heavily lacerated to my hands which could, could be very frustrating you know i broke my left thumb ahead of the karate combat fight so for three weeks leading up to that fight i had a broken left thumb um which is another reason why when people criticize that performance i was like a broken thumb um but i've you know i've have had those sort of digits get impacted and how annoying it is to heal them so you know i i recognize the danger and for sure it's scary it's terrifying but just because something scary doesn't mean you shouldn't do it and for me, the the pros just like barely outweigh the cons of doing this. It's close. <laughs> it's very close, uh, but just barely enough for me to uh, to commit to something like this. What does this mean for your career? I feel like your career is going really well, and this is only seemingly adding a spotlight for you. I know you're used to being in my chair right now, and now I'm interviewing you, and I'm I'm going to ask you a quick fire that I usually reserve for like people like Paolo Costa and Kevin Holland, you know, like. Now yeah. you're in that seat. So how intriguing is that for you? It's definitely weird. I don't know if it's altered my point of view to the extent that some would think. Um, but like, I, I just feel it's important for me to walk it as much as I talk it. And I do take this broadcasting as seriously as I can and hope that my play by play career continues to evolve. And that's my main focus. You know, I believe that that's my future. And so I want to be able to have this level of credibility where if someone wants to say oh well you haven't been there you haven't done that i can be like well actually i've done it in every discipline possible right so there is this this level of um i don't know credibility that i'm, I'm trying to build but um i don't know you know I, th I think it's weird i have so much respect for these athletes that i never feel on the same playing field like i don't equate myself to costa any guy in the ufc anyone on the regional scene i mean i i really don't even put myself in the category of fighter or, or athlete it's the way that i always say is hey if you cut hair a couple of times does that make you a barber no it doesn't you know what i mean you just cut hair a couple of times that's kind of the same way that i approach you know what i've been up to is like oh i've gone out there i've made that walk but i'm not a fighter you know it's it's it, i have too much respect for the craft and the industry and the people within it to uh define myself as such i'm off to fight circus on friday you are to commentate <laughs> i'm commentating so you've sat in that chair john actually in the past has been like you should fight ben the bane davis uh john nutt is the craziest guy in combat sports he has he he you know you know that russell crowe movie a beautiful mind John Nutt has a beautiful mind, <laughs> for better or worse. That guy is insane. I love him to death. Like, I've never met someone as um, just interesting. He, spending spending a day with John Nutt should be like a giveaway on some cruise, you know what I mean, that you can you can raffle off because it, it truly is a treat. And you'll have a great time, man. You've, you've been to the Fight Circus shows before, right? Yeah, and I've, John's been one of my best friends now for about eight years. So yeah, I know full. I know yeah. fully. We, we yeah. went to the show together. Um, but my question is, will you heed the call from the circus, wheel of violence, that kind of thing? No, I'm not <laughs> fighting in fight circus. No, f that. Those guys are insane, man. Um, again, I've been a part of two of those shows, and I I just look at it and I'm like, no chance, dog. I'll always be. If, if I'm free and they want me, I'll always be there to do what I can 
in the broadcast or uh, any other function. Hell, I'd even just PA on some of those fight circus sets because it's a great time. But fighting for them, I mean, unless I get to fight like a midget, you know, or something that's a very clear mismatch that I could win uh, without much difficulty, then yeah. But no, I mean, <laughs> those guys are insane, dude. I would never. Like, I did the Indian leg wrestling after I lost the game, and that was probably the realm of, of what I do competition-wise with fight circus. There, what are we talking about? You've already fought on Fight Circus. You've Indian leg wrestle. I think we need to... <laughs> <laughs> we need That's to another it. loss. Do we do we have to count that on the list of losses? <laughs> I think we need to celebrate it. That's for sure. Um, mm. You know, it has its place in the crazy spectrum of combat sports and entertainment. Um, can I ask you about celebrity boxing we are living... Or celebrity fighting, I guess, or influencer... Combat. I don't know what we want to call it. Like, what's happening right okay. now? Um, and did Jake Paul start this? Did KSI start this? What is happening right now with this whole phenomenon of influencer combat? I want to call it. I I always refer to it as crossover combat. That's my term. I feel it's the best applicable one because you know some of these guys they wouldn't call themselves influencers. Like for instance, X Series. Um, 17 we had danny simpson who's a premier league winner a very established football star so i'm like i, I don't know if i can call him an influencer but crossing over you're damn right he did and put on a great hell of a show in uh in the three arena um i i think it's a really unique space and certainly something that isn't for everybody it's an acquired taste i understand that um i love it i think that many of the people inside it are just salt of the earth individuals you know you see people online you see content creators and you form opinions and ideas about them but you don't really know them you know what i mean and i think i've been pleasantly surprised by so many people in the crossover space and they're actually really trying their best to get better at boxing to take it seriously they understand the risks you don't play boxing um and i think that the level of competition that's within you know misfits in the crossover world is steadily on the up in you know the incline like if you looked at the interim lightweight tournament that misfits is doing right now guys like joey knight guys like lil cray cray yuddy gang you'd hear those names and you're like well who the f for those people and it's like for sure but they're actually pretty all right boxers they're competent inside of the ring and so you know the biggest criticism that people have is oh these guys suck and this and that bro anyone in that interim lightweight tournament would fuck up 99 percent of people right so i think there needs to be a bit of an adjustment um of people's dis disposition towards it and uh, just an open-mindedness right it's kind of like bkfc in the sense where it's not for everybody but it's doing a damn good job, and I'd say it's constantly evolving and improving. And, um, you know, there's an audience and demographic for it. I, I, you know, I'm a younger dude, right? And so getting to meet all of these other same-aged folk that are inside the social media space is fun. It's something I enjoy. And uh, I would say that, like, funnily enough, the best broadcasting experiences I've ever had have been Misfits shows. You know, full respect to all the other organizations I've worked with. Um, you know, but like they, I, I just, the X series is fantastic and, uh, I think it's great. Who would be a dream fight? In fact, if I offered you Justin Bieber right now on Fight Circus, on oh. who would you want to fight? On Anybody? Fight Circus, yeah. If you guys, listen, if you guys could get Justin f***ing Bieber, uh, to agree to a boxing match. Um, and I've thought about this a little bit, you know, cause for me, I, I think there's one, there's only one thing left for me to do, which is a mixed martial arts bout after this you know bare knuckle experience that, that really is the last stone that i have to turn over and then i can fully be like i'm done with this it's it's truly time to just focus on solely the broadcasting end and so i've considered okay well who would i want to do an mma fight against and the name that just like keeps circulating in my brain is the consensus worst ufc fighter of all time which is Mike the Truth Jackson. So I think, you know, because again, I want something I can win. I don't want to go in there with someone that's going to beat my ass. I'm not interested in doing that again. Um, and so I think Mike Jackson, after he got handled by Pat Militich last year and only won because Pat got tired, uh, would be a fantastic MMA fight for me. Maybe PFL. Maybe we swing for the fences, get a UFC prelim on an Apex card. <laughs> Who okay. knows? But uh, I think that would be like that opponent and then those two platforms would be really what I'd be interested in next. Awesome. Mate, I wouldn't be surprised with anything with you. You've been crushing it. Uh, let's crack on with the White Law Sport quick fire. So, Ooh. who is the funniest fighter in combat sports? 
Funniest fighter in combat sports. I would say... Paolo Costa is up there, but I want to give an honorable mention to Chase Hooper. Who's the most annoying? Colby Covington, easily. Best dressed. Best dressed? Um, oh, that's a really good question. I would, I would best dress. I think Charles Oliveira has had some insanely stylish outfits. Very white teeth as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who's the best looking? Best looking fighter. Um, gosh, I mean, I feel like it's a, it, it's not fair if I go with Sage Northcutt because he's just like conventionally, uh, every beauty standard lines up to him. A uh, best looking fighter. Um, Luke Rockhold. We'll go with Luke Rockhold. Who would you most like to go for dinner with? Oh, who would I most like to go for dinner with? Um, I think Daniel Cormier. I think DC would be the most fun hang. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he knows his food for sure. Who's got the best hands? Best hands. Mm, it's either Holloway or... I, I, I love my guy Adrian Yanez, so I think I might put him in the same, you know, same booth. Best wrestler. Best wrestler. Um... See, I, as a guy that doesn't have an extensive grappling or wrestling background, I don't think I have an eye for it necessarily. So take it with a grain of salt. But um, I, I I like Marab's wrestling style. Now, best is is certainly something that can be argued. But I would say in terms of, like, what impresses me the most, his wrestling impresses me greatly. Who uh, would you most want by your side in a street fight? Poirier. Give me Dustin. Give me the diamond. And... I might have asked you this essentially, but dream fight in any weight class, past or present? Oh, so any weight class, right? I answered it with what sort of makes sense, but if I could get anybody, um, I think I would probably take Matt Snell, and I'd bring him up to 55, and then I'd, I'd stick him in a pure boxing match. <laughs> I love Matt. I think Matt's got good hands. I think the chin is obviously a little bit... Uh, not not his best attribute, so I could exploit that. But um, yeah, me and Matt Schnell duking it out. I think that'd be fun. Maybe it's you who's got a beautiful mind, Ben. Superb. Uh, superb. Maybe, maybe. Uh, mate, this was really enjoyable. It's always good to see, you, dude. Um, hey, I'm looking for uh, projects at the moment. If you have any advice for people to reach out to in Asia, or if you ever hear anything in Asia that you don't want, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm finishing with South China Morning. Well, I'm doing South China Morning Post. They're renegotiating. I'm running all the social channels for the One Championship stuff. And then I'm doing like a bunch of Kunkamai commentary in Cambodia. But like, it's tough out there at the moment, man. So if you, if you know anyone yeah. I should reach out to, I'd appreciate any advice you have. Dude, I'll keep my ears open, man. Um, admittedly, I don't, I don't have the biggest network, I'd say, out in Asia um, or, or where you're at necessarily. But... 100% man if I get if I get something across the table Andrew Whitelaw is the name that'll come to my mind you're the man I appreciate it uh hopefully see you in person one of these days but uh crush it in Spain man proud of you you should be proud of yourself awesome news thank you brother I appreciate it hey let's hope I get a win <laughs> yeah you can and you will uh all right have hey, a good man. one well, well this will be put together by the sports keto dudes these quick fires usually do pretty pretty well uh, they'll clip it out into like the most interesting parts they'll do an article They'll tag you, all that kind of stuff. So thanks for your time and uh, yeah, crush it, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you.